Okay, we're recording this video on Sunday, the 15th of May, 2016. It's 2.44 p.m. Chicago time. Hope you had a great week's trading last week. Hope you're enjoying your weekend. Wanted to put a video out uh, before the end of the weekend uh, because we're sitting at one of these kind of critical support levels at the moment, one of these ledges, make or break type levels. And so I want to show you what I'm seeing on my charts, trying to anticipate what might happen uh, Monday, Tuesday. But before going on to uh, the kind of the more recent charts, I went back on the website and tried to identify all the videos I've put out in the last year and a half. Uh, talking about these kind of critical support levels and whether they led to decent calls in terms of waterfall declines and kind of decent moves. And this is the evidence. Each of the uh, vertical dotted lines here is when I put out one of these videos. And the green ones are the good ones where it's kind of led to a multi-day decline, uh, a two or a three or four kind of day decline. Uh, very nice one at the beginning of the year that led to this uh, real big kind of waterfall move. This one back uh, 2015, just before April, was a kind of a three-day type move. But most of the time, they've ended up being just one-day calls. You know, they've led to weakness, but all of a sudden, the markets, you know, the big players have kind of stepped in, the markets held, and we've rallied back from there. So they ended up being critical make-or-break levels, but uh, didn't end up being multi-day moves. They were just opportunities for the um, professional professionals to step in on big volume, hold the market and kind of reverse it and go the other way. Um, so it's not as if I've got a like a stellar track record here in, call of, in terms of calling these, but we are at uh, one of those levels that's kind of critical. Uh, Friday's low, which is 2038, uh, is one of the numbers. Uh, the low of a few days ago, uh, this one here, which is uh, 2033, uh, is absolute kind of critical. So we're sitting within 10 points or so of this absolute critical support level. And I'm going to show you what I'm seeing on my charts. First chart to show you is the multiple time frame view using the 135 minute chart. Now, beauty of the 135 minute chart is there are exactly three 135 minute bars in a day session of the E-mini. So day session is 405 minutes, uh, that's three 135 minute bars. You put up one of these on a multiple time frame view and it gives you an intraday view of the market. So that kind of morning, uh, midday, afternoon kind of bars. The intermediate time frame then is a daily chart and the uh, highest time frame is a three day chart. And a three day chart is kind of a nice chart. You can't do it on TradeStation normally. You can only do kind of daily, weekly, monthly. But a three day chart is rather nice. And you can see what we've had over the last several months is, you know, the three day chart, this highest time frame support held, resistance came in, support held, resistance has come in over the last few days. So all of that's kind of really nice. The last move that we had down, this was obviously, you know, we topped out in uh, the end of December, and this is January's kind of uh, big uh, sell off move. Bottomed out really nicely, exhaustion sell, first bullish divergence comes in. We've got pullback to end of trend happening on the lowest time frame, the intermediate time frame, all syncing up with cyclical support on the highest time frame, led to the rally that we had going forward. Now, <clears throat> put out a video probably would have been two or three weeks ago saying this uptrend move was not over until we saw pullback to end of trend on the intermediate time frame, which would be kind of the daily chart. We'd had a little pullback to end of trend on the lowest time frame, on the 135 minute chart, but because we'd broken above resistance on the intermediate time frame, we had to run the thing out. That was an early end of trend. That's why it's grayed out uh, on the uh, trending system, pullback to end of trend. So we're waiting for the pullback to end of trend uh, to work itself out on the intermediate time frame. And it was all going according to plan a few days ago until we reached resistance on the lowest time frame and we've come back and closed below support this pullback level on the intermediate time frame. So that's looking weak and it's all happening around cyclical resistance on the highest time frame. I mean, a, a beautiful move would have been the sequence that we had the low beginning of February being made. The lowest time frame, the intermediate time frame, end of trends come up. Um, we uh, it syncs up with cyclical support, and we rally to the upside. The pl the flip side of that would have been this pullback to end of trend, then pullback to end of trend on the intermediate, syncing up with cyclical resistance, and we kind of roll to the other side. But we had this pullback level violated, and so question is, are we going to play this thing out, pullback to end of trend, or not? So it's absolutely critical. Uh, that this kind of Friday's low kind of holds and we're able to make that uh, pullback to end of trend sequence 
for this thing to roll over kind of prettily. If it doesn't, it just shows the market is super weak, that we uh, weren't able to kind of complete this move and that we'll go for uh, a bit of a spill, a bit of a sell-off to the downside. So that's why, uh, you know, uh, Friday's activity was, uh, Thursday into Friday's activity uh, was absolutely critical because this thing has been uh, not played out prettily and we're sitting at critical support. Better X trend, which is a pretty little kind of uh, trailing uh, stop type system uh, based on exhaustion and explosive volume, uh, is showing similarly that weakness in the market. So um, the nice thing about Better X trend, which I've not talked about for a long time, it's free code on the site. Uh, it trails a stop based on a large volume in the market because trending moves start with explosive volume getting the trend going, and they end with exhaustion volume, exhausting the market from which they roll over. And essentially all of the volume that bought the bottom with the ex and got the move going in the explosive volume uh, ends up taking profits when people are capitulating uh, with a top of an uptrend at exhaustion volume. And that entry volume can has enough uh, volume to get out at the top of the move. So that's why it's trailing a stop based on those large volume moves. So on a bunch of indices here, you can see so this is the Dow. Uh, the trailing stop trailed up nicely, but then with the last two days activity, the uh, trailing stop got violated and it's turned uh, into a downtrend here. So the resistance has kind of flipped to the other side and the trailing stop is now trailing on the way down. Same thing with the S&P 500, trailed the stop up nicely, got violated the last couple of days and it's now kind of showing 2083 as resistance kind of on the way down. Uh, the E-mini chart is almost a mirror picture of the index chart. Again, trailed up, got violated the last couple of days, and it's kind of on the way down. Now, NASDAQ and the Russell slightly different. They kind of actually got that stop broken a fair few days ago. And actually, with the last uh, week's activity, the stop got broken to the upside. So we're still sitting on that critical support level there. Same thing on the Russell chart trailed it up, got broken a few days ago as it started trailing down there, and now that support level is the support that we had over the last few days. So it's showing weakness on the Dow and the S&P, still got a break again into downtrends on the NASDAQ and the Russell. And again, the low over the last few days, you know, in all of these charts will be absolutely, absolutely kind of critical. So that's kind of trailed over. If I look at the single time frame view of the world, uh, and this is what the multiple time frame view is showing, that 135 minute chart. I'll show you the 45, the 135, and the daily chart here. Here's this pullback to end of trend that would it would be nice to play out nicely uh, into a kind of completed move, but if it's get, getting violated to the downside, all of a sudden this thing is showing real severe weakness and we kind of can have a tumble, tumble to the downside. 2100 was absolutely critical. If you back it down the 135 chart, you can see we've made lower highs, uh, high at 2100, lower high, lower high, and so on. And we found this wedging pattern. So this level that we're at at the moment has been critical kind of support. And we've got lower highs being made. So we've got a wedge going on there that we could easily just drop through because this is showing lack of confidence to break up through these resistance lines and kind of get it going. On the one, on the 45 minute chart, this week's activities, this is kind of the high being made on Wednesday, uh, Tuesday, Tuesday into Wednesday, and then Thursday's Friday activity, again, lower highs being made at each time. And this was the sell off volume getting this move going and we're breaking support. So with Monday's activity, we're likely to have a support coming on the 135 minute chart as this thing finds somewhere some kind of level of support. And then we're lining up potentially a triple break. We'll have support on the 45, the 135, and the daily chart. So uh, all of that is showing how critical these levels are. So Friday's low at um, 2038, uh, and then the low over the last uh, few days, which is 2033. Uh, are critical levels and we're within 10 points or so of those. So make or break time. It's like this has got to hold. If if we don't hold, we could see ourselves having a nice kind of tumble to the downside. Um, otherwise, you know, if it holds, if we break below it and kind of close back above it, you know, kind of set ourselves up for breaking through 2100 again. But again, it's critical. I think a lot of big volume is going to come in at some point uh, on Monday's trade based on what happens. And so it's going to be good trading, good good kind of day trading. Uh, the other chart I was going to show you is just the high time frame chart on tip bars because tip bars kind of intraday really important when we see uh, the blue professional bars kind of come in. So this is the 13,500 tip bar chart. 
and this was the high being made. So this is Friday's activity open to close, Thursday's activity open to close, this is the overnight activity, and then this is Tuesday into Wednesday, and you can see the exhaustion volume, all the blue professional bars taking profits and so on, and we start to break to the downside. Blue professional bars during the middle of the day are really important. This one came in at this kind of critical 27 level, and the professionals were selling it down on that little uh, little push back. They sold it down. We know they were selling it down because the highs of those blue professional bars do not get broken. The lows get broken, and so we go for a, a, a break to the downside. A little bit of profit taking at the end of the day. That's kind of usual. But again, again, um, middle of the day, here's a blue professional bar breaking through the lows of the previous day that's really important they pick it up here take profits kind of temporarily but then as soon as we come back into those levels they're getting out again and then friday's activity this was an absolutely critical level they kind of pushed it up into 2060 blue professional bars came in at those highs it was critical levels you know over the last three days it was areas where we kind of been breaking support coming back in getting short again it was the last opportunity to get short at 2060 and then it sold down as soon as we broke through the low of the day at 52 it started to take off and then when we broke through the low of the of the uh, the previous day here at kind of 50 this thing really took off to the downside for a beautiful kind of downside move so um, the professionals during the middle of the day if during the middle of the of, of Friday uh, we'd had you know the reverse if they'd been coming in at the lows and trying to hold it and then Monday would be a testing day where they hold those lows and we kind of can set off for a rally that would be a different picture but the way this played out on Friday when they came back into those highs they wanted to sell it down and so lower highs going on we've broken our wedge kind of here to the downside this 50 level when that went it was you know it really took off to the downside and so we're playing at lows and potentially we could have follow-on moves on Monday uh, where things are kind of really start to accelerate to the downside. So again, it's make or break type levels. Now, just going to show you the last chart, the day trading chart. Uh, I was into this trade short, but I didn't move my target out, which is just dumb. I kind of kicked myself because it was a beauty. This is a, uh, a setup to look for if you're using the multiple time frame, and I apologize, they're coming for Ninja as soon as I can get them uh, kind of done, they're coming for Ninja, but it's not out yet. So, But if you're using TradeStation, do jump on board uh, the multiple time frame view because this was a beauty of a setup. So 500 tip bar chart, we come into resistance, looking at the uh, Pro-Am and, multiple, and uh, better momentum view of the world, whole bunch of blue professional bars here at 2050. You could see it on all the charts. On the 500, the 1500, the 4500, it was a, a whole bunch of blue professional bars testing that high at 2060. Cyclical resistance on the highest time frame, we start to break into a down, downtrend, and here's the low risk entry point as we come back up. It's a pullback and a downtrend kind of situation here. Low risk entry point around cyclical resistance or under cyclical resistance is a beauty of a uh, confirmed kind of entry point. And we're breaking both time frames and this thing led to a beautiful decline. I was short 56, had a target at 52. Uh, I was out for four and I don't know what I was thinking because we'd had a 10 point range so far that day. And so 10 points is pretty small. Uh, and it's unlikely, well, the higher probability is that we'd have a larger range than just a 10 point day. It was fairly um, kind of quiet trading and we had not, hadn't had had kind of nice fast kind of trending activity. So uh, as soon as the low for the day, which is at 52, got broken, all the stops got run. And then the low for the previous day got broken, the stops there got run, and this thing just turned into a capitulation uh, on the downside. And there was easily another 10 points in it. And I kicked myself because... Um, I entered well and I just lost my nerve really kind of just getting out too early so it's my uh, biggest weakness kind of uh, entering too early and exiting too early and this thing was uh, obvious that you know there would be stops to be run under 52 which was the low for the day and I could have easily moved my target out by at least another couple of points and I did it so it was dumb anyway uh, how did it play out you can see the downtrend all these white bars bang 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 was not over until we saw exhaustion sell bullish divergence pull back to end of trend goes off on the lowest and then the intermediate time frame we have a flush signal here and it starts to find some strength but it's got to go pull back to end of trend on the highest time frame, so it's still weak. And you, I mean, you would not be reversing and going long here. It's well after you know the midday 
uh, the 11 a.m. window uh, had closed. No kind of reversal trades. This is all about kind of just taking profits on that sweet downtrend move on the way down. But anyway, that was the signal. Low risk entry point under or around cyclical resistance or support on the highest time frame. Uh, and it plays out to a really beautiful move. Now, in as a point of interest on the 135 minute chart, that is the setup that we have happening at the moment. We've broken into a downtrend on two time frames. There's the low risk entry point. Okay? And it's happening around cyclical resistance on the highest time frame. And we're breaking supports again. So, uh, what looks, you know, it's a mirror image of a, a, day, tra a day trading kind of setup here. Uh, is showing up as a swing trading uh, play uh, for a setup here. So there we go. Uh, enough said about that. It's make or break, you know, 2038, 2033. Let's see what happens. Sunday's open, uh, which is going to be happening in about an hour's time, uh, and then Monday's activity into Tuesday. Let's see what happens. It's another of those kind of fun, uh, fun type days. If we break, uh, it'll be a good trading on the downside. Anyway, hope your trading's going well. Looking forward to next week.